Hello and welcome to the VR120 HD overview live stream uh, with fake studio audience. In the future. My name is Mark Allen and we're going to have a look at the VR120 over the next few minutes. It has had major upgrades in practically all areas uh, and if it's not improved, it's brand new. So a lot to get through. For those of you, and I'm going to imagine there are quite a few who have already used a VR, I am going to focus on the new bits. Um, for those of you who haven't used a VR, the basic principle from the beginning was to create a switcher which was equally useful for audio and video in one unit with a streaming output, which is also useful for recording, just as useful as a recorder. So let's cut to the chase. I'm going to turn to my stunt double to the left here and we'll have a look at the I.O., just for the basics. So hopefully you can see on the close-up here, now we have six HDMI inputs, six SDI inputs, both of which have frame rate converters. The HDMI inputs have very powerful scalers built in. Above here you can see some audio inputs, so XLR or jack, six of those, and some RCA inputs as well. Moving further across, we can see you've got three HDMI outputs, three SDI outputs, plus an Ethernet connection for direct streaming, so no computer required, or PTZ camera control or other kinds of control of the unit, and a USB-C streaming or recording output. Coolest thing, in my mind, is that the, all of these inputs, the 12 inputs, are all simultaneously active, all usable at one time. Very, very powerful set of I.O. there, just to begin with along with some audio outputs here. And in fact, you've got 42 audio channels that can be uh, accumulated over digital and analog inputs. And to finish the I.O., on the front here, we have a USB port and an SD port, SD card port, I should say. So the SD card is used for recording or playing back video content or loading images, doing backups. USB port, again, for loading images or doing backups. And uh, what I love to, it's a very small thing, but like many of our switches, a little mini jack headphone output. So now let's have a look at the user interface. There have been a few buttons added of major importance, shortcuts that make the whole process of using the VR so, so easy. And the VR graphic interface has had a major upgrade as well. Let's have a look at some of that. So of course we start with the main switcher buttons down the bottom here. Now they will change function depending on what mode you've got selected directly above them. Of course the default was probably going to be input select, so we can choose our video sources, OGS, scene memory recall. You've got instant recall for the first eight there and these are freely assignable uh, from any of the scenes you've, you've stored inside the machine. Of course macro recall, which we'll talk about in uh, more detail later on. One of the buttons that I love is the new setup button on every major area of the machine. So these are shortcuts into the settings for that area, which means there's no more menu surfing. You're directly in there. And what I love too is that the, the menu when it comes up is only taking up the lower third or so of the screen. So you can still keep working uh, if you need to. Over on the left here also, as before with the audio channels, you have a setup button that goes directly into the channel settings, or it's, it's above the master fader, you have some more advanced settings. Um, the graphics on these are just great, and we'll, we'll have a look at these in more detail. At the top here, we can see that you've got the audio trigger pads, these are new, and some, or some more shortcuts directly into audio uh, parameters, like uh, adaptive noise reduction, and some reverb and uh, auto mixing and so on. Now let's talk about another major upgrade that we've had with the VR120, which is the number of layers that are available for compositing. So we now have a total of eight, which is great for professional looking presentations, but also gives us a lot of flexibility on deciding which content goes to which output or which layer. So for example, we have a program out, a sub program out, auxiliary out, and so on. And we have separate control for each output, for each layer. Let's have a look at how that's done. If you could bring that up on the screen for me, thank you. Now these give you a basic idea of how the different output assignments could be used. So for example, um, 
for my program out, I could have all of my layers assigned. For the sub-program out, I may only have a couple of layers required. And for the auxiliary out, I may have everything assigned again, except that I've got a different background image because I've selected a different source as the auxiliary source. But to get into um, how to assign those, I'll show you how simple this really is. We bring up one of these with a the shortcut setup button here. I can first of all go to inputs and assign which input is going to which channel. Same with outputs, same simple process. And with the layers, so in other words, which of these picture in picture or DSK layers are going to be included in each of the outputs, again, I can have it enabled or disabled for any particular output. Let's talk about direct streaming. So as I said earlier in the piece, VRs have always been able to stream. That's been a core function. A new feature is being able to direct stream. So using the Ethernet port at the back or tethered to a phone, we can direct stream without the use of a computer. Have a quick look at the page where that's all set up. So I'll start by going into the stream settings with the shortcut button here. And on the first screen there, you can see straight away that you have available, if you wish, to stream to two different services. I can set those services up here on page two here. So we have presets for YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Twitch, or you can go in and make a custom setting. On the third page, you can see here, you can actually be connected simultaneously to not only a LAN-based uh, setup, but also tethered to a mobile phone network. And uh, the direct streaming, of course, means you've got no computer involved. This is a really big feature. It also means that with two services connected, or two uh, Wi-Fi and a, a mobile phone service connected, you have backups should one fail, should the speed drop out on another, you have um, the ability to keep the stream going at all costs. We also have adaptive bitrate technology in there, which will adapt uh, to the connection speed should it need to. Turn that off. Okay, see. Now I want to talk about the built-in recorder. Uh, the SD card there at the, the front allows us to record the content that we're streaming or not streaming uh, direct to the SD card. You can also simultaneously record a separate audio file. What I really love as well is that you can import and play content from the card as part of the show. And it was so easy and so fast, I just wanted to show you that quick procedure. Let's have a quick look. So you remember before I assigned the video player to this shortcut user switch here. Jump straight in. I can obviously got transport controls for the video that's currently loaded, but just to show you how easy it is to load a file, these files are just sitting on the SD card. I've got this and that's it. It's done. It's ready to play. You have a loop function so that video can be playing continuously. Just a really neat little function and just so quick to, to get uh, files imported and up and running. Audio upgrades. There's been a ton of them. You recall at the top I mentioned you could have up to 42 channels of audio involved in your show. One of the great things I love is being able to assign any of those audio sources to a physical fader really quickly and I want to show you that just for a second. So to assign any of those 42 channels, I'll just jump in here and press the setup button on one of the channels. And Joe, if you could get a close shot of the screen for me. It's as simple as this. Audio input, choose where it's coming from. Any of the analog or digital sources are available there in a the list. Real simple. If you jump across to the main bus setup, uh, a lot of similar parameters are available, but also, uh, first of all, parametric QQ, we've had that always. Uh, send levels on faders, nice virtual faders there. Make it visually um, make sense. And then over here, we've got two really cool add-ons um, for the output bus, auto gain control and adaptive noise reduction. So I think the name <laughs> explains everything about what they do, but it can make a really good, smooth, pristine 
broadcast or recording. And then finally, we've also added a 15-band graphic across the stereo bus. It's a nice, again, graphic interface. It's also cool. Okay. Right. And staying in the audio realm, uh, another major addition that we've had is eight audio trigger pads, which you could use for background music, stings, play-ins, and so on. I have a quick look at those, and then we're going to talk about macros, another of my favorite uh, additions for the VR120. So if I trigger the pad, I get the music or applause, whatever I've assigned to it. Now, to get into the setup parameters for that, Press the setup button here, and if we could have a close up on the screen, please. Now you can see that I can tap on any of those virtual pads and choose what the pad mode is. So, how is it going to be played, whether it stays on, whether it needs to be held down to play, what the fade in time is, level time, and so on. Really, really simple to get content in there, really easy to set up, and incredibly useful in a live show. Now, one of my favorite sections, the macros. I guess everyone knows what a macro is, but quite simply, it's just the ability to program a whole sequence of events to happen automatically after a single button push. And that's incredibly powerful in a live environment, especially when there's so much going on. The macros on the VR120 are, of course, very powerful. There you can have up to 100 of those. And Probably the easiest way just to demonstrate straight up is to play a couple that I created uh, first here. So imagining we've got a conference starting and you're introducing the speakers. I'll put up a title for the name of the conference. I'll have their images fade away and then go to the stage. Another one might be a more of a pre-recorded stream. Introducing the host. Actually, used the pips to divide up um, a single video image, so I could uh, do the corner in and quarter outs with those. But to understand how the macros are created, let's just have a quick look on the screen. You can record um, motions in real time, or for more complex stuff, you can go into the event list. Let's have a quick look. Okay, so to record a macro, first press the macro button. Second, uh, use a shortcut setup button here. Now, if you can get into the screen here for me, switch over to the main screen, great. I'm going to choose an empty space. I'm going to press record. And if you can pull back to the surface of the VR, just for a moment, you'll see that as I press a button, a new step appears in the macro. Once I'm done, I can hit apply. Go back to the screen. If I want to do this manually, I can add a step and you can see there is a massive selection of things that we can have the macros control. And of course, within each step are several options. One of those options can even be to trigger another macro. So you can get some really good complex uh, actions happening with the press of a single button, which is fantastic in a live show where we've got no brain space to think about complex things. Love macros. All right, we're getting close to the end now, but I want to talk about a couple of other things. Just quickly, scenes. We've always had scenes. Scenes are a snapshot of the way that the mixer is set up at any one moment in time. Really useful for making quick changes and a whole bunch of things instantly. The scenes on the VR120 load faster than they've ever done. They also have a new ability to dissolve between scenes, and you can set the amount of time that it takes to dissolve between the scene. Another new feature is something called a sequencer. And a sequencer is not entirely dissimilar to macro in that it allows you to pre-program a series of events to happen in a particular order. You can step through them, or you can have them play through automatically at time that you set for each event. I'm going to show you the sequencer now, but I'm also going to tie that in with the PTZ camera. Now, PTZ camera control is a part of several of our machines. I'll say that again, several of our machines. And the VR120 is just the latest of those. Amber Technology have been very kind and loaned us two of their AVA PTZ cameras, which we had great fun with. They've worked perfectly. And 
I'm going to cut now, I think, to the screen of the sequencer, and we'll help talk a bit more about PTZ and sequencer together. So let's have a look at the screen here. and bring that up. So I'm going to press one of the user buttons now, which is coming from the factory is with a shortcut to the sequencer. You can see a sequencer is just a series of steps, which I can either step through or play automatically and give each step a period of time or delay before the next step is played. In this case, what I've done is step through a series of camera positions. Now, just to prove that I'm not lying, <laughs> Joe, could you cut across to the, the PTZ camera that's on the, the, the desk here and just have a look as I step through each of these sequence of steps? You can see it immediately recalls the camera position. Incredibly useful to have this all on the one machine. To have a look at the camera setup, I'm going to jump into this screen. We'll stay here back, sorry, come back to the, the VR screen for me. And you can see all of the cameras can be set up individually with their own IP addresses here. Incredibly intuitive to enter information for any of these areas. We've got a virtual joystick here, which I can use to move the camera around. And as I mentioned, we've got a second PTZ camera up here, which, well, I better switch to it. Here we go. Um, I'll just do a quick camera position change from the screen here. We can also use the joystick positioner to mess things up completely. PTZ cameras are just fantastic. They give the ability to make it look as though you've got more than just one or two or three cameras. Um, and especially for a remote audience, being able to give more views of the room uh, is really inclusive. The VR120 can actually control up to 12 PTZ cameras at once. They can be different brands. All they have to be is VSCA compatible. And as I mentioned, with these AVA cameras, it was no effort at all to get them working. We simply plugged them in and they were there with the right IP address, of course. Before we go, we did have a few questions coming through. Someone's trying to show me the piece of paper, but I can't read that. I'm sorry. Can you read them uh, to me? I'm still able to store it on board. Oh, sorry. I should have mentioned that. Yes, uh, this, you can have 16 images stored on board, and they're there uh, when you turn the machine back on. And of course, you can load images very, very quickly from memory at any time. There and there's are. another one, animated graphics. Oh, does it have, what, does it have them on board? How are they presented? Ah, okay, so we don't have animated graphics stored as such. However, um, you can certainly play graphics back from the video player. So if you wanted to create an animated logo or graphic with uh, a keyed out background, you can definitely do that. And one last one, 4K, is it 4K compatible? No, it is a 1080p device. Um, if you've got a 4K source that you really want to use, we do have a, a very useful solution for that. I'd encourage you to go and have a look at our website for the, uh, the VC100 UHD. It's a really good way to integrate 4K with a, an HD environment. But um, is that that's all? Okay. Thanks very much for watching. We got to the end, um, hopefully without too many fluffs. And uh, I really appreciate your time with us, and we'll see you next time.